stay at the midpoint of the great 40 days, we look to the sign of the cross as a source of hope and as a reminder of the essential reality of what it is that we do, why we do it, and how we must approach it. The principle is simple. If we would gain Christ, we must lose everything. If we can lose everything and gain Christ, then everything we lost will be transformed, will be perfected, will be healed, and will be given back to us. We do not try to gain Christ for the sake of regaining what we lose. We recognize that everything that we give up is already a gift from God and that we have taken it in place of our Savior. So we set it aside. We seek Him, who is the desire of our souls, the creator of all that we are and all that we are called to be. We set aside the things of earth and we gain heaven on earth. May we find the strength and the wisdom to live this, to understand this, to be what we are called to be. Amen. Please stand and we will continue the divine liturgy. We spoke to the young people regarding the very shape of the cross and the significance that this has as a simple reminder that our earthly plane has been intersected by the Lord. He has entered within this creation. He has descended into its depths. He has risen and he raises the world up with him. All of this we see just in the shape of the cross. But today, we place the cross in a bed of flowers. And it is good that we reflect on this today. For indeed, the tradition is that flowers sprang up in the place where the cross of the Lord had been planted, that it was always a blessed place, and that even when Helen went later and found the cross, there she still found either the basil, some will say a daffodil, some will say other flowers, but she found something sprouting up as a sign that in that place, life had been brought to this earth. And it is for this reason that we take the flowers and we decorate the cross and process it through the church today. But there is something more than this, and it is appropriate that we, the adults, speak about this. Because the children, we endeavor very much to keep our children safe, to keep them away from the brokenness of the world, to give them an experience of the world that is joyful and peaceful and clean. But we who are adults, and surely those who have more years than I look at me and laugh when I say, oh, we who are adults. But nonetheless, we know. We know that the world is broken. We know that that childhood joy does not last. We know that suffering and grief is inevitable. And therefore, for us to see the cross is to see not just the sign of the Lord's suffering, but the reminder of the suffering that is common to all humanity. And for us then to see it on a bed of flowers is to actively confess, confess the hope and the confidence that we have. The same confidence that we are given assurance of in the gospel, that whoever tries to save his life will lose it. And this is the lesson every child must learn as they come of age. If they try to retain, if they try to cling to that childish view of the world, they are guaranteed to have it wrenched from their hands, however tightly they grip it. If they let it go, if they live a life of love, of self-sacrifice, of service, of devotion, 
more of repentance and humility and love towards God, then the promise is we come again to that place of peace, to a place of joy, to a place of security and safety. We come into the embrace of the Lord where all things are well. It is a lesson we sometimes forget. When things seem to be going well in life, all of us, we tend to become complacent, to say, oh, the worst is past. Now life will be good. And we may be tempted like the rich man in scripture to say, oh, Saul, everything is good. Eat, drink, and be merry. And then the next day, the rug is pulled out from under. It is almost a rule. If we find ourselves to be in security, in safety, in a place of happiness, something will happen to disrupt it. And our immediate reaction is to fight against it, to resent it, to cry out in the same voice as our children that it isn't fair. We don't deserve this. And that may or may not be so. It's irrelevant when it happens. What we are called to remember is that Christ does not come and answer the question of why there is suffering in the world. Christ does not come and answer the question of whether it is or is not fair. Christ comes and submits himself to all that is unfair, unjust, ugly, broken, and wrong. And he transforms it. So that, on the place, so that on the place of death and torture spring up flowers. This is the lesson. This is the lesson of human life, of our life in Christ. If we try to avoid suffering, it will seem that suffering piles on. If we stop fighting and resenting and railing against the injustice and fix our eyes on Christ, if we can take up our cross willingly, then joy will come, peace will come, life will be given to us in place of death. This is the message of the cross. We are at the halfway point of the fast. May we have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to understand that the way to salvation lies through the valley of the shadow of death. But the Lord is with us and we need not fear. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good day.